This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. The antidote for inappropriate speech is appropriate speech. You've heard that said, but do you really believe it? Do even I really believe it? Let's put ourselves to the test in a hypothetical scenario. Or three. Let's say a politician uh, speaks to the union leader and during his conversation with them, he tells them that you're a child molester and you're not. The union leader prints the quote with reckless disregard as to whether it's true or not. Well, conventional American thinking these days has a sort of default expectation of what you will do in reaction. You will commandeer the taxpayer to fix your problem by suing the offending publication and individual in a government court. Will you do that? Well, maybe not. In New Hampshire, I guess I can't even name a case where a free stater has done that, or any of the ally liberty activists I know of. Not over-liable. A more appropriate response to that kind of situation, I think, would be, again, appropriate speech. Discussing your concerns with the reporter's boss, protesting outside the hypothetical, uh, hypothetically libelous newspaper, or outside the workplace of the libelous state rep, who I guess actually would be considered a slanderous state rep because he has said something rather than printing it. In truth, these situations are, uh, these responses are not ideal. The situation is not ideal for those responses because of the fact that you would be drawing additional attention to the newspaper and thus additional subscribers possibly, and you'd be drawing additional attention to the charge, but it's still better than commandeering a taxpayer. Other alternatives would include uh, investigating the offenders to find dirt on them that is real rather than imaginary. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But I guess the real tough question comes in, how should libel be handled in a free society where you could sue a person in some form or fashion without commandeering the taxpayer? For example, let's say it's the year 2050 and we have a free New Hampshire and there is a trio of non-taxpayer funded courts that you can pick from to help settle conflicts like this. Maybe they're technically government courts or government sanctioned courts. Maybe they're Mike Ruff Incorporated. It doesn't matter to me as long as no taxpayer money is commandeered. So at that point, do you pressure the newspaper into arbitration? Could you even do something that might be considered suing? How or should the newspaper be maneuvered into participating what would or should be the penalties if they don't. Maybe some of the proto-answers to these questions actually lie on the opposite end of the tunnel. We've been talking thus far about the libelous speech by the newspaper, but we haven't discussed the implied reason why libelous speech is currently considered a danger. We haven't asked ourselves whether libelous speech would be a danger in a free society, or if so, how much of a danger it would be. Right now, if someone libeled you in this way, your main fear would be that it would result in unjust retaliation by the authorities, or the general public, or your friends, or your enemies for that matter. We haven't asked ourselves whether the excessively credulous nature of the public is more of a problem than the actual factual errors. For example, if the newspaper in question uh, published something like this and the people reading it were possessed of the healthy skepticism which would mark a free society, one might not have to care what the newspaper says because you'd know that people would not automatically believe it. Libel law and its current application, although not as bad as it could be, does have some degree of chilling effect on free speech. For example, I will generally not interview someone 
and broadcast their concerns about some incident for which they for which I only have their word to go on. In fact, I don't even generally care if they have written documentation of some kind. That's of no value to me either. Generally. Because their conversation with me is too much of a hot potato. It's too likely that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time going through there and editing out the things that might be libelous. Libel law simply keeps their words off my channel. Not always, but sometimes. In a free society, I wonder if it would be better for people to simply be able to pass on the concerns of others and let the public decide whether they believe the others without having to worry about being hauled in front of a judge because people no longer fear words and they simply correct the errors with words if there are any errors of course in many cases when you interview someone about a grievance they'll tell you exactly what happened exactly accurately they get discriminated against certainly on my channel the same way as a person who is spewing lies if I can't tell which is which just a thought or two how should libelous speech or reckless disregard publishing be treated in a fair society, a free society? For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm.